Hello everybody and welcome to the latest obscure and niche video from the Intrigued Engineer. Well, it has been a while. Apologies, life is in the way, but let's get back to doing some fun stuff, shall we? Today we are looking at communicating between a Siemens PLC and a Raspberry Pi using a protocol called MQTT. So, what is MQTT? Honestly, that is out of the scope of this video. I was going to go into it, but I chose not to, as chances are, if you're looking at this video, you're already well versed in what MQTT actually is, how it works, publishing, subscribing, brokers, all of that nonsense. But if you would like to see that video, let me know. One thing I will say, though, is about what MQTT stands for. Most places you look, you'll see it stated as message queuing telemetry transport, but this actually isn't the case. And you can be the life and soul of any party by telling the story that MQTT is actually a remnant of the IBM MQ series with the MQ standing for message queuing. But in the case of actual MQTT, there's no message queuing. So what, 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 what's going on? This all came to a head in 2013, where the OASIS Technical Committee addressed the confusion and determined that MQTT actually stands for nothing. And what is the name of the technical committee that decided this? It is the Oasis Message Queuing to the Offer. Oh, let's just get to some coding. Okay, so as normal with these things, we're going to just start it from a, a completely new sketch. So we're going to call it MQTT to Pi. Um, and we're just going to auto detect um, what hardware we've got on there because um, I've got a few bits and bobs that are attached to it. it. Might be quicker if you've just got the PLC just to do it from the drop down, but horses for courses. So I'm going to add new device, I'm going to call it the Intrigued Engineer, why not? I'm on a 1200 or 1215, that doesn't matter for this bit, unspecified 1200 CPU, go. There we go, so it's found uh, found everything. So I've got um, a CM1241 and a CB1241. Don't ask why I've got both, it's a long story. So first thing we are gonna do is actually come straight out of this uh, because to do MQTT, you actually need a, a library that doesn't come as standard with this. I'm gonna put the links in the description uh, to this um, and also links to the, um, the MQTT Oasis uh, committee thing if you're as sad as me and are actually interested in that stuff. Uh, but first you need to come to the Siemens, uh, Siemens site and look for libraries for communication for somatic controllers, which is this guy, it's got a lot in it. Uh, we're just gonna be going through the MQTT today. Come here, download it, depending on the version that you're running. And also I would definitely recommend downloading the documentation as well. So the documentation is here. I'm just gonna set this up for in a minute because as always with these things <laughs> what you will definitely need is the error handling so this uh, this this section here is worth its weight in gold so i'm going to leave that up there so once you have downloaded the library and unzipped it into your library's folder where are we got a lot of stuff in here i need to tidy it up Here we go. So you should download, unzip it into your libraries folder, and then you should end up with this. Once you've done that, you can come back into your, um, into tier portal and go over here to libraries. So in the project library, sorry, global library, sorry, you will want to, um, open a global library. So click on the, the green arrow bit. Again, find your libraries folder inside of here. Find the folder you've just uh, unzipped. And then you will want to select this bit. 
Um, if you're making your own libraries, um, which I recommend off the back of this for some stuff we'll get into in a moment, you'll want to uncheck this open as read only. Um, for this, leave it as read only because you don't want to mess around with anything in there. So press open. Did I press the wrong thing? Well, maybe not. Okay, so now we've got the libraries controller here. Inside of this, we've got a whole bunch of stuff, but we want to come into types. Obviously we're doing LM, well, MQTT, but the folder is LM, L, uh, <laughs> LMQTT, try saying that quickly. And we have all of the, the gubbins inside of there. First thing we do, we get this LMQTT folder and we drag and drop it into program blocks. So now it's done its thing. Inside of program blocks, you should see this folder now where you have um, the LMQTT folder with uh, the, the actual client um, uh, conversion function block. And also you will note, you've got some new data types as well. So in the PLC data types inside of here, we have this um, connection parameter. So now we've done that, we know that the PLC is all fair game to start doing MQTT stuff. As always with my stuff, I like to come in here to the system and clock memory, enable the system and clock memory, and just pop it out of the way. So we're not gonna be silly and overwrite it. Good. Okay, so now we've done that, we can actually get around to legit coding the thing up. So first things first, what we're gonna to want to do is give ourselves a new block and this is gonna be a data block. And this is gonna hold all of the, the configuration um, and basically how to how to run the LMQT. So I'm going to call it MQTT config. If I can type properly. So the first thing we do, we're going to bring in the new data type um, that, um, that we looked at earlier. And we're going to call this connection parameters. Just start typing LM, and you can see it pop up there, LMQT. And we have a, a bunch more to, to fill out here. In fact, we've got a, a whole bunch more. If we open up the main, I am just going to leave myself a bit of space up here. I'm going to put the, uh, the actual client block here. Now this looks super scary the grand reveal is a big old intimidating block but don't worry um there's a well it, it does look big it is big but it is actually relatively simple once you've got your head around what all of these little bits and bobs do which is where this config database is going to help us out so this um connection parameters this plugs in um where is it that i'm just going to go away now and populate this list and then we'll come back and uh, go through what goes where and how it all goes together. Fantastic. So we've populated this data block, um, sorry, database. Uh, again, looks fairly formidable. Um, I would recommend just taking a screenshot. I'll open all this up. I wanna open that up. And basically just copy copy everything I've put here with the, 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 the data structure um, just, to, just to help yourself out. So all of these plug into all of the stuff in here, which I'll do in a hot minute, just after we've gone through some of the stuff. So the connection parameters, this was the data type that we, we did before. 
for the, the, the hardware identifier, um, you can go through and specify this if you need to, usually 64, 65, something like that. But if you leave it as zero, it works just fine, um, just uh, especially for basic stuff. Connection ID, um, again, uh, I just pop that in as 10. For the broker address, this is where we need to go into a bit more detail, as this is, this is where you put the IP address of what you're looking for. So we're going to come and redo this um, in a moment. And in the next video, when we start talking to AWS, this is where we put the fully qualified domain name. But we're going to leave that for now. So that is blank. And because we're doing a non-TLS um, communication just with the, over a local network with a Pi, our port is 1883. Uh, again, that'll change in subsequent videos for your TLS. Um, just set the enable TLS and the validate server to false, broker certificate, client certificate, leave that as zero. Um, again, that comes into it on, on the next video, uh, keep alive as zero. And that is all your connection parameters done. Like I said, we'll come back to the IP address in a moment. Were the will message, um, again, just an array of bytes. You can make these as long or short as you want. So for the will message, the message to send and the receive message. I just put it as um, a thousand bytes, but have a feel free to play around with this, do exactly what you need to save memory or kind of fit what you need in there. And all of, all, all of the rest of the stuff is um, uh, double inside integers, bools. The control, um, we're gonna set that up in a moment. The feedback, we're, I've put it in here and we're gonna attach them, but we're not actually going to use them in this. And the diagnostics is its own data type. And then this, again, we're not gonna to make too much use of it now, um, but this is how you would get alerts uh, and safeguard things when you're, when you're writing this in, into proper code. The current topic, um, again, I skipped it at the start of this video, but this is the topic that we're either publishing or subscribing to. So I've just put TIE for the Intrigued Engineer, then a dash, then level one, then a dash, then level two. So that is, uh, that's everything in there. And now let's go and, uh, and plug it all in. So it's fine plugging in big data blocks like this. It's better to split your screen and uh, yeah, let's just throw it in. Okay, so that's nice and populated now. Um, the ones that I just want to draw some attention to, obviously we've got the obvious ones like publish, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Um, the will topic and the, the will, um, not so much the will topic, sorry, the will message payload um, and the, the will length. Um, I've run into a bunch of problems with this. Um, for, for the majority of stuff I do, I don't use um, wills, but I found that if the will length is zero, even if you're not using it, um, it causes some issues when you initially connect to the, to the server. So I just pop this as 10. The actual will message is just empty, just an, an array of bytes. Um, but it has a, I've, I've says it, it, I have said it is 10 long and that, that, that solves out a lot of, a lot of issues. So now we've done that, just to make our lives a bit easier, what we're gonna do is, close this down for a minute. We are gonna make a little structure up here just to allow us to control it. So I'm gonna add some in, like, actual inputs from some switches. So we're gonna make a switch that is a real input. Zero, zero. And all we're gonna do here, this is just to allow me to physically flick some switches I've got connected to the, to the IO of this thing, just so we can control what, uh, what's going on. And 
behind this for uh, reasons that will become clear shortly. I am going to move a certain number for now. I'm just going to put five in there. I'm going to move that into the message send length variable. There we go. All right, for the next part, we're going to need uh, the actual pie that we're going to talk to. So I have my pie uh, just sat on the desk next to this. Everything's all connected by ethernet. So I'm just going to go into it on this computer so you can see what I'm doing using a thing called putty. Um, so this just allows me to, to do stuff in the command line on a Pi that's not this computer. So, uh, login if I can remember what it is. Okay, we are in. So all we need from the Pi um, is, well, first thing we need is IP address. So on, well, on a Pi, it's a bit different to Windows, but it's IF config, and then I like to do dash a just uh, to get a bit more information and what we are looking for is this guy here so this is the ip address of the raspberry pi 192.168.0.172 so we need to take that number so if you write that down and come into the back into this config and into the connection parameters we need to tell it that the broker address is here because we're going to put the broker on that pi so here where we have IP address, um, again, we want to leave the, um, the fully qualified domain name uh, blank, open up the IP address, and then it's split into four bytes. So I've already popped this in, 192.168.0.172. Now it's a byte, but if you put it in, in decimal, when we actually run this, it will convert it into hex. So uh, don't worry about having to put it in, in hex. And again, just double check. We're on port 1883. Fantastic. So that's all set up. What we need to do now is actually install a broker on the Raspberry Pi. So what we are going to do is jump onto the Pi. Where is he? There we go. And we're going to pop on. Um, well, first off, we're going to update just in case we're, we're, we're out of date on the Pi. So we're going to do sudo apt get update run that i updated this relatively recently so it shouldn't have too much to grab hopefully anyway okay that's good so we're going to install a broker called mosquito so we're going to do sudo apt get install mosquito Hit go on that. I already have it installed. I should do anyway. Um, yeah, so that's already on there. And we're also going to do same thing, install mosquito dash clients. Hit go on that. Again, I shouldn't have to install it on mine, but yours might take a, a little while to, uh, to actually install it. So now we've done both of those commands. We have installed mosquito. Raspberry Pi is up to date. And that is all ready to go. So what we need to do now is come out of this and we need to throw this program onto the, the actual PLC. So let's, let's upload it. Fantastic. So all that is up on there. And now let's go online. First thing we're going to do is come into the config file. Not the config file, sorry. We could do it from the config file. But we're going to have a look at... Uh, oh, I'll have to switch on. Let me just turn that off. So we're going to have a look down here and we're going to look at this uh, feedback status. So see if we've got an error. We don't, which is good. And the status is 7,000, which is good. Now, if you remember the, uh, 
if you remember the stuff at the start we went through, um, this is where we're going to compare this error table. So we've got 7,000 at the minute, 7,000 not connected, it's just kind of sat there doing nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the switch to connect on and see what happens. There we go. So this switch is on, so it's enabled. We're not publishing, we're not subscribing. We're just kind of sat there doing nothing. And now this is reading 7004. So if we have a look at that, 7004, MQTT client connected and ready for a job. So that's brilliant. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to pull putty up and we're going to spool up Mosquito. Um, and we're, we're going to spool it up in a, a publishing mode. So we're going to send a message from the Pi to the PLC. Now you can do this in a script and, and do sorts of all, all sorts of clever stuff with it, but this is just the, the, the base thing to, to get you going. So we're going to do mosquito underscore pub for publish, and we're going to give it a few tags. We're going to give it the tag H for the host. And what did we say? Oh, bugger, what did we say the IP address was? It was 192.168.0.172, was it? Let's not guess. 192.168.0.172, there we go. Memories worked for once. So that is our host. We want to give it the topic that we are publishing to. Now we've already said here that the pub, um, the topic that, that we want to publish to, um, also note it is case sensitive. So the topic, which is dash T, is TIE. And we go one level down, so lev one and lev two. And the message that we want to publish, we'll just do something really simple because uh, we're going to have to take it from uh, from hexadecimal and we're going to do dash m for message and the message is yo so before we press go on that if we come uh, and have a look at this we can have a look at the not message to send but the receive message so this is an array of a thousand bytes and we have absolutely nothing <clears throat> in here and on the Raspberry Pi, if we send this message out, press go. Nothing happens. Ah, nothing happens. Of course nothing happens because we're not subscribed to anything. So we need to throw this switch here. So this switch is, the, oh, sorry, not that one. That is subscribe. We, yeah, we want to subscribe. So we want to throw this switch. I'm walking all over the place. So now we're subscribed. So if we have a look in the receive message bin, if you will, let's resend this message. And you can see here, we have something that's coming in hex. It's three bytes long, so it seems right. 79, 6F, 21. So let's go to a hex converter. I'm setting up a message that I'm going to be sending out. So 79, 6F, 21. We convert that and the message is yo. So we've done it. We've talked from a Pi to a PLC without having to pay for Siemens Mindsphere. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is turn off um, turn off the switch to subscribe and we're going to try sending a message from the Pi, sorry, from the PLC to the Pi over MQTT. First thing we're going to do is upload um, just something slightly different because uh, I've been doing a secret message for you guys. And this is where this, uh, this comes into play. So the message that we receive, we, we receive a message on a topic, we get told the topic that we get it from if you're using wildcards, and you also get the message length, which you need to 
used to process that information. When you're sending a message out, you need to say how long this message is. And the message that I want to send out, I know it is 27 bits, sorry, bytes long. So I'm gonna move this 27 into here. If I don't do that, if I left it as five, it would only send the first five bytes of whatever I have in that array. So it wouldn't make much sense at all. So we're gonna quickly load that. I'm gonna put the switches back. There we go, all greens, 27, 27. We are looking good. Still sat, <clears throat> still sat at 7,004, so that's good. Um, I will say the majority of the errors that you have coming through here when you're trying, oh, you might be looking and get no errors, but if you do get errors, the likelihood is it is going to be this guy here, 8601, a connection error. And there's a, from my experience, most errors when you're trying to connect, if your will message is a zero, um, Oh, just pretty much everything that goes wrong will give you an 8601 error. Um, I haven't had many of the other errors unless I like left something actually unplugged. Um, but that's that's probably the error message that you're going to get if you if you start running into issues. So what we're going to do now is switch up the Pi because um, this that was just publishing publishing a uh, publishing a message. What we're going to do now is set the Pi up as a subscriber. So we're going to do mosquito again, underscore sub for subscribe, dash H. Now, uh, pro tip here, you don't have to do the IP address each time. You can just say local host because we, well, if you are using a local host, you can just say local host, it makes things a bit easier. The topic, we're going to use the same topic. In fact, no, let's, uh, let's make a point. So I'm just going to subscribe to everything coming out under TIE and I'm going to use a wildcard. So if I publish in this or if it's in level one with something else or whatever, it will still come through to this. And that's all we need to say for that. Um, we can launch this. We can do a bit of a debug mode on there as well if we wanted, but I don't think that's really needed for this. So let's set that. And now this is just going to sit there waiting to get a message. So what I've done, uh, I need to blank it out before you'll uh, see exactly what I put, but I've come up with a, um, a message in hex on the PLC. If we have a look in here, in the message to send, this is the message that I want to send to the Raspberry Pi. Um, I've just smashed this in by copying and pasting, but what you need to do when you're doing um, larger, larger data stuff, especially things like JSON and things like that, is make your own uh, serializer and deserializer out of uh, function, function blocks. It's a bit cumbersome. Um, if you want, you can just go out and buy Siemens MindSphere. It does all of this for you, but this is kind of, so you don't have to do that. Um, and just talk natively from a PLC to uh, to to something like a Pi or, or or Amazon Web Service or something like that. So that is the message we're sending. All we need to do now is do these switches. So we're still connected, and I'm going to flick this publish switch, and we're going to see what comes up from the Pi's point of view. Absolutely nothing for some reason. Have I tried to be too clever? Okay, um, I'm going to put a, an hour in the video, arrow in the video when I did it, but I have been an idiot. So we got publish switch, publish switch. Um, this needs to be this publish. So we weren't actually telling it to publish anything. So I'm going to throw this up. I'm on the Pi. 
let's go back to what we were doing, localhost with the wildcard. So now that's subscribed, just sat there waiting. We're connected. We are at 7004. Let's throw this publish switch and see what happens in the pie. There we go, look at that. So that is my message in hex. Well, was my message in hex. It's been decoded at the Pi. And it is working. So barring one silly mistake, that is not bad at all. So that is how you send messages to and from a PLC to a Raspberry Pi. And in the next video we're going to do, um, the framework is all going to be the same. It's going to use the same program, but we're going to start making it talk to Amazon Web Service. So we can, instead of talking to it over a local network, we can talk to the Pi. Um, sorry, we can talk from the PLC to AWS and vice versa from anywhere in the world. So it just gives you a much better level of control and a much better level of security. You may have noticed that we're not using any passwords or usernames or anything here. Um, we're not using TLS, that's all um, That's all disabled. When we go to Amazon Web Service, just by the nature of the thing, we have to have broker certificates, client certificates, secure this, that and the other. Uh, it gets way more, way more interesting, way more fun. So that is gonna be in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, any questions, pop them in the comment section. I'll try and get back to you. And uh, yeah, hopefully it won't be two years until I post the next video. Bye-bye.